What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Kenny For Real, where we do nothing but talk about basketball. Pacers fans, I understand that you hired a coach today. This video is not for you. I'm sorry. I don't know anything about your new coach. I'm going to have to do some research. I know he was a part of that Raptors team that did the thing. Shout out to the Raptors for just getting assistant coaches jobs. It's just like they're turning into the Spurs. They're literally the Spurs of the East, where no matter who is that assistant coach, they're going to get job interviews and potentially, potentially get head coaching jobs. So shout out to... Nate B. J. Orn. I li I do not know. I I've never heard his name before. I'm sorry. Does that make me a casual fan? P possibly, but he might be the he might be the savior of the Indiana Pacers. But we'll talk about that later. Today I want to talk about the Golden State Warriors. And unfortunately for y'all fans that love the fashion mashup, when I talk about the Bulls, I wear a Bulls shirt. When I talk about the Raptors, I wear a Raptors shirt. I don't have anything Warriors related, and there's a reason for that. If you walked out of the house with a Warriors hat, shirt, whatever, beer bottle, cross the head. Everybody hated the Warriors for the last couple of years. So if you was rocking that gear and not a real fan of them, it just it wasn't working like that. So the best thing I can do for you fashion guys is here's a Steph Curry shoe. I think it's a Steph Curry 6 or maybe a 5 or maybe a 4. It's kind of irrelevant. Only shoe that I know like the numbers of is Jordans and some of the LeBrons. Yes, we're talking about the Warriors in today's video. Why? Because it's the offseason, and I don't know what else to talk about, but this is a team that's on my mind at the moment, so it's a team you're going to record a video about. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, hit the bell, all the normal YouTube-related stuff. As you know, the Golden State Warriors had the second overall pick in this year's draft. Not only that, they have a returning Steph Curry, who, I mean, he came back a little bit before the season got put on hold. They have a returning Klay Thompson that is in the gym. I saw him dunk the ball, and then I saw him hit some shots, and that's something Klay Thompson's going to do. Uh, the timetable is so weird because of the the drop-off of no NBA games and stuff that it's been a, over a full calendar year, calendar year since Klay Thompson injured himself. Um, so he should be pretty much good to go, which is great. So they have the number two overall pick, and unfortunately for them, there is no Tim Duncan in this year's draft, but no matter what Bob Myers does, and I almost said Seth Myers, which I think is a late night TV show host. Well, no matter what Bob Myers does with the second overall pick, the Warriors are in such a good spot for next season. Oh my God! Um, like I said, it's no Tim Duncan. If you don't know what I'm trying to reference, is that you know the the Spurs to get Tim Duncan, they had some injuries here and there, and then for the last month or so of the season, they did tank. None, none of the Spurs fans want to admit it, but yes, you did tank a little bit towards the end of that season, which makes sense. You were on the path to get Tim Duncan. It's okay that you tanked for a month or maybe a couple weeks. But boom, they get Tim Duncan. They were already a good team. And then shortly after that, they won a championship with a young Tim Duncan. It was perfect. And now the future is here. And since then, aim is the playoffs until this year, which is ridiculous to say. So, there, yeah, there's no Tim Duncan in this year's draft class, but there's so many different options that Bob Myers can do. So many different things. The, the obvious thing that I keep seeing fans come to me about selecting James Wiseman um, because of position of need for them is the center position, which I can agree and disagree with at the exact same time. One thing with the season of tanking for the Golden State Warriors, because because it was that as well, they went out and they tried a bunch of different prospects for the season. They went out and gave Dragon Bender a contract. It was a 10-day that they gave up after that 10 days, but they also gave up a person that was drafted with Dragon Bender, Marquise Chris. And Marquise Chris is an interesting player because since he was drafted, no matter what organization he was a part of, whether it was the Suns, whether it be him getting choked up when he was a part of the Cleveland Cavaliers, he had been a part of a bunch of different franchises that were unstable. And then he comes to the Warriors, a franchise, though they were terrible this season, one thing that they had is stability. They have a front office. They have a good coach. They have people in that locker room. Draymond Green was not good this season, but I bet you he was getting those younger players better. So I understand the idea of wanting James Wiseman, but I think for a team like the Warriors that is instantly back into contention because of Steph Curry, because of Klay Thompson, because of a younger Drake older. Why did I say younger? Draymond Green. They're going to be right back into contention. And using the second overall pick for a guy in their system would be, yo, James, grab, grab us some more rebounds. Yo, James, rim run. Those are things that Marquise Chris had done very, very well before the season was shut down. So I would be okay with them drafting James Wiseman there, but I think the better option for them is to trade down. Now, I must say that I am very, very far from a draft expert. I just started getting into this year's draft, which is kind of sad because we had five months of no basketball and I wasn't doing anything. I could have been watching college and getting used to these prospects and stuff, but whatever, I didn't. And I'm just starting to get into it. 
And there are so many. This is not a draft class that has a Zion, that has a John Moran, and we know that. But there are a lot of players in this draft class that I can see contributing to what the Warriors are trying to do with winning basketball. And you don't need the second overall pick to get that. You don't. And there are going to be teams. I mean, it's already been rumored, right? LaMelo Ball said he only had conference calls with two different teams. And one of them is the, the New York Knicks. The Knicks have like the eighth pick. LaMelo's not going to be an eight. So what are the Knicks plan on doing? They may call up. Mr. Bob Myers and be like, here's here's our offer for that second overall pick. Now, I don't know if the Knicks have anything that the Warriors will want, but there are also rumors of like the Chicago Bulls. They're planning on moving up into the top three from number four. I don't know what they'd give up, but there are going to be teams that are willing to trade up for that number two. You know, and with a team like the Golden State Warriors, you can convince your fans to trade from number two. You can't. You can't. If it was the Knicks at number two and they were trying to trade back, Knicks fans would be like, bro, we haven't had anything for a decade. Don't trade that pick. But the Warriors fans understand, like, okay, Bob Myers is a smart guy. Whatever trade he's going to do with this number two pick is for us to get back into contention and for us to potentially win number four. Number four. Wow, number four. I mean, whatever. Um, And now with the Draymond Green stuff, um, Draymond's a very interesting player. I saw that on Reddit somebody was trying to make a conversation on whether or not Draymond Green is a Hall of Famer. If you ask me, I would say he is. But I understand the argument against him. One thing that would look so much better on Draymond's resume is in the 2015 finals, right? That was 2015 when they blew the 3-1 lead. That game seven, he was immaculate. If they would have came out with that victory and he was the reason in game seven, give him his – don't they get like Hall of Fame buffs was like made out of – Metal, it's just a picture of their face, but made out of metal, like carving and statues. He needs one of those if that was the case. But one thing that he said, and this is a name that I have not mentioned at all in this video, is the Wiggins. Andrew Wiggins is still on the team, believe it or not. Uh, one thing Draymond said about Wiggins is that Wiggins has Kevin Durant defensive potential. Okay, Draymond, if that's the case, who going to get it out of him? We know that he has the ability to jump out of this world. He has some of the longest arms in the NBA for his position. He's, he's swifty. He, he has all of the, in, the intangibles intangibles to be a good defender but it's Wiggins even since college there were there were so many times in college where you're like okay there's a great game from Wiggins from defensive side of the ball but then three games in a row he just doesn't do anything I don't know if it's been waiting this long I don't know if you're gonna ever get it out of him but if it is somebody that would it's the Golden State Warriors Golden State Warriors I remember going into last season I was one of the people that were super, super high on what Steph Curry could do next year. No Klay Thompson. Draymond Green is gone. I mean, not Draymond Green. Uh, Kevin Durant is gone. I think that Steph Curry is going to average 35, and I really did think so. Well, he didn't do that. I guess I didn't really take into consideration that everybody's going to double-team him. Like, who is he going to pass to? D'Angelo Russell was there, but who else was he going to pass it to at that point? Who, the man didn't expect to see double teams in the third game of the regular season, but he did. And he didn't. He did not look well. And all the Curry haters out there were so happy to see him fail. And just like, man, I miss those times where like being a fan of Steph Curry was a was a cool thing, bro. When Steph Curry was rising up and to his MVPs, being a fan of Steph Curry was great. And for me, it's, I think it's hard to be a fan of the NBA and not enjoy watching Steph Curry. He does so many things on the offensive side of the ball that are just phenomenal that's incredible that's unbelievable like if you are like secretly hating the Warriors for those times that they went on to win championships of them getting Kevin Durant and, and dominating the league for a couple years I'm sorry I, I, I'm i just not in that boat bro sure I it probably would have been better if Kevin Durant stayed with the OKC Thunder but when he was there they were like a well-oiled oiled machine that wheel was turning. That offense was looking amazing. And again, it might have not been the best for the league that they had such a dominant force. But I could see the argument that, hey, it was better for the league. Because when we did see them fall, even though they were they were very injury, like Kevin Durant was not playing and Klay Thompson had just tore his ACL. Um, when they did fall, it was, it was cool. When they were close to falling from the Houston Rockets, it was cool. It was fun. I don't know what this video was saying at all. I'm sure there's going to be some teams, a lot of teams that are trying to trade up for number two. And if I am the Warriors, I don't know exactly what I'm looking for if I'm trading down, but I'm listening to every offer. I definitely am. I mean, obviously, you don't need guard play. You got guard play. Um, Maybe maybe more wing depth. Maybe you don't trust Wiggins long term. I, I don't know. I don't know. I've been seeing a lot of people draw up trades and send them my way, and a lot of them are, 
are interesting for the Warriors. The one I saw that was super interesting that somebody had just sent me, and if I had my phone close to me, I would I would give you your credit. It was it was <laughs> it was Wiggins in the number two pick to Cleveland for number five and Andre Drummond accepting his player option. I'm not saying it's a good deal, but it's it's a it was an interesting deal that somebody sent me. Uh, for the simple fact that, I mean, Dre, uh, Andre Drummond will only be there for a season. You get that rim runner, defender, rebounder to the extreme with Drummond. He's, he'd only be there for a year. You get off the Wiggins contract if that's something you don't want long term. And then you still have the fifth overall pick. And for the fifth overall pick, if you want to go get Isaac Okoro to fit that role of Wiggins as far as a defender on the wing, even though he can't really shoot like that and Draymond can't shoot like that and Drummond can't shoot at all. I'm not saying it's the perfect deal. But deals like that might be on the table coming into this offseason. And if I'm Bob Myers or Seth Myers, whichever one is really the general manager and whichever one is really the late night TV show host, I'm listening to everything. There's so many things that can happen with the Golden State Warriors. And whatever they decide to do, one thing we can agree on is that they're going to be a good team again next season. And that, and that is good for the NBA. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace.